All right, to question 11 on our 2020 chemistry exam. Um, these are the multiple choice. Which of the following statements is correct? Crude oil can be classified as a biofuel because it originally comes from plants. That is not true. Crude oil is a fossil fuel. Methane can be classified as a fossil fuel because it has major environmental impacts. That is not the reason for a fossil fuel. Fossil fuels means that they're going to run out eventually and that they take millions of years. So that explanation does not link in with what it actually is. Ethanol can be classified as a fossil fuel because it can be produced from crude oil. Fossil fuels and crude oil is pretty good. Ethanol probably can be done that, but let's have a look at what the next one is. Hydrogen can be classified as a biofuel because when it combusts, it does not produce carbon dioxide. That is not true. Biofuels come from plants. So C is our best answer for this question. Question number 12, what have we got here? The diagram below represents a section of an enzyme. This diagram can be described as the secondary structure. No, it's not a secondary structure because that should be the showing hydrogen bonds between amide linkages. Primary structure is pretty good, so I can cross out second structure there. It's either this one or this one. When if I go and look in my data booklet at what I have, I'll see the fact that these two are correct here. We've definitely got us. Oh, hang on. What is it going to be? I think it's going to end up being this one's alanine. I know that, so therefore it's going to be D because this guy here, looking into my data booklet, is ala, not gli. Gly is our first one, which has our just hydrogens on the other side. Moving on to question 13. Hydrogen fuel cells can, and a hydrogen-powered combustion engine both can be used to power cars. Apparently they can already. Uh, three statements about hydrogen fuel cells and hydrogen-powered combustion engines below. Let's have a look. Neither H2 or H2-powered combustion engines produce greenhouse gases. That is not true because H2O, which is produced from both of these things, is a greenhouse gas. Yes, they don't produce carbon dioxide, but they produce water, and water is a greenhouse gas, so it's not going to be that one there. Less H2 is required per kilometre when using a combustion engine than using a H2 fuel cell. That doesn't make sense to me because when you combust things, you're actually going to have a lot of more energy wastage through heat than using fuel cells. So I don't think that is true. I think more heat per H2 is generated in a combustion engine than a fuel cell. That kind of makes more sense to me because in a fuel cell, you're going to end up with electrical energy. So it's going to be C, which should be um, the answer to question 13. Let's move on to what is next. We've got question number 14. Question number 14 is... The magnitude of the equilibrium constant for this reaction is 640. We've got that reaction there. For the reaction of this, what is it? So what have we done to it? We have simply divided it by 3, haven't we? So what we should have is the cube root of... 640 because if you're doubling your coefficients you square the k if you're halving it you square root it we have got a third of our thing so it's a cube root so what is the cube root of 640 i think it's um eight let's have a look uh so 640 and how do i do cube root on this calculator second function cube root all right three cube 640 is 9, so it's going to be A by the looks of it. Alrighty, and your delta H here will be divided by 3 because it's in line with your um, coefficients. So therefore, we're dividing that by 3. So that's what's happening with you getting a third. It's a bit tricky because we haven't, we don't normally do thirds for um, manipulation of K, but that's the idea there. Your coefficients, and it's to the power whatever your coefficient changes. Um, for the reaction N2 plus H3, what happens here? A catalyst increases the number of collisions. No, the catalyst will just increase the proportion of successful collisions. The rate of a um, Ford reaction increases with increasing temperature. Uh, the rate of the Ford, yep, so the rate of any reaction will increase. You're going to favour the backwards reaction, but the rate of the Ford will still increase. The catalyst reduces the activation energy of the forward and backwards reaction by the same proportion. Hmm, I think it's the same amount, not the same proportion, but I'm going to move on.
the activation energy of the forward reaction is greater than the activation energy of the reverse reaction. Let's have a think about this. This is a exothermic. The forward reaction, you have this activation energy, so that's not right. So the activation energy of the reverse reaction is this, so therefore that's not true. It's up to these two here. If I reduce, not the same proportion, it's the same amount, so it's going to be B. If I reduce the activation energy, for example, if it goes like this, um, the proportion of my forward reaction is going down more. So you can see that my activation energy of my forward reaction is about half as much now. However, my activation of my reverse reaction is nowhere near half. It's gone down by the same number, but not the same proportion. So B is the correct answer for that one.